All right, ready? Oh, yeah, I did it three times. Here we go. I'm ready. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Angie. And I'm Jamie. Mental health is important. <laughs> and sometimes even the best therapists lose their keys. Or their shit. <laughs> like the shit show. That the is... shrink show. You pronounced it wrong. Tune on in and listen to Angie's shrink show of a life because I'm perfect. <laughs> listen to our <laughs> podcast, okay? You'll <laughs> like it with coping therapists. Skills. Coping skills. Let's just get, let's just get, this is where we're going to start. The big mug. Fuck yeah, all the better to fill with gin. Thank you, Xanta. Fill so, with gin. Gin, fill with For candy, cross out gin. holiday gift. Yes. So Christmas time. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> what is your favorite Christmas song, just for funsies? Oh my gosh, so I don't have a favorite Christmas song, but what that reminded me of is... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that okay. question totally sprung me on this entire so, tangent, which... Now I'm going to go back to <laughs> back way back at the day I was born. We're okay, start from the beginning. so... Shut up, Angie! I, was, I like to tell well-rounded stories. I was conceived <laughs> and... <laughs> okay, so I have two stories. My all-time favorite Christmas song, and I don't care... Who the fuck cares will always be Mariah Carey. Shut the fuck up. I no. No, fuck you. I don't fucking care. But my second favorite or tie is I <sighs> literally will, like, it's a core memory of driving to school in high school in Melissa's car and we would do it. Hey, Santa. Hey, Santa. Santa. And like it's like this little duet of these two girls, and we would just duet the whole. I mean, it was a two minute car ride from school, so we'd we'd probably be sitting in the parking lot singing the end of it because we would, we just went up the street. How many High school our, wasn't far. How many of our favorite <laughs> things in life are triggered by memories? Oh, probably a hundred. I mean, seriously, like yeah. Would but that song be your favorite if you didn't think, have that fun But memory? I also think I like the Mariah Carey song because I love Love Actually, like the most sappy rom-com. I do like that movie. And I just think that's the most adorable. But the Mariah but, Carey song has been so no, but overplayed. Kurt and I also, our tradition for Christmas is we watch Love Actually and do pedicures on each other Aww. every Christmas. So I think that's also why I just, I love that movie. I love that song. I don't fucking care who hates it. I will listen to it every day. Gross. It's just so good. No. I disagree. I don't want a Christmas. What's your favorite? I love Oh Holy Night, um, Celine Dion. Yeah. Anything Celine Dion. Oh my God. Her voice. Is fantastic. Is like a goddamn angel. Um, I also love Little John, All I Really Want, Really Want for Christmas. <laughs> oh my God. There isn't enough rap, hip hop, Christmas songs. It really, if you think about traditionally. I mean, if Eminem came out with one, I would listen to it. I'm just saying. Yeah. Traditionally, Christmas music. What's gospel? Seems typically. to be, um, a very white singing Dominant. Yeah. There aren't a lot of really great... Like, Christmas and Hollis is a great one. Yeah. Or any Mannheim steamroller. Actually, another childhood memory. My brother and I, year-round, would... Back when Surround Sound was new and, like, giant, big-ass speakers that you would have to place around yes, this yes, place. Yes. We would... And you were kick-ass because you had those speakers? Yes, because we were, like, rich or something. But in our basement, we would have the surround sound. I'm deaf in one side, so I didn't know what surround sound meant. It really sounded the same to me no matter where I was facing. <laughs> I've never understood why it's a big deal. Like, in theaters, I don't know. I don't understand. Hmm. But um, we would always listen to Mannheim Steamrollers. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Mannheim Steamroller, the soundtrack, all year round. All year but, you know, at Christmas time especially. But we would always just blare. Like, <laughs> near, 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 near. That's hilarious. <laughs> that, that would be. Because <laughs> it's, you know, it's techno-y. 
Yeah. Wow. So that, that, was, that, that was as brings, far as you... That, that was like also brings back a core memory. The extent of your parents' Christmas... Or I guess the, the extent of their record... The record. No, I mean, are, we have plenty of CDs and But records. you chose Mannheim Steamrollers in July? I mean, for fun, yeah. We would also listen to a lot of Michael Jackson. But, you know, it was just those songs that we could listen to over and over and over and over. Because <laughs> now thinking about it, even as grown-ups, we both will be like, yeah, I listened to that one song I listened to like 10 times in a row. And now I'm like, oh, shit, we still do that. So not a lot's changed. I mean, what I'll I'm still listen to songs 10 times My brother and I will listen to things on repeat. So holidays, when Christmas comes around. Anyways, when you're ready to listen to Mariah Carey, do you invite you, me over. Do you guys invite people over and listen to Mannheim Seamrollers on repeat? Every day. <laughs> um, actually, this is what my family does. I was, I, it sounds overwhelming when I say it out loud, but I personally love it. And maybe it's because I grew up this way, so I think this is normal. But we have approximately five to six Christmases a year. Um, this is just on your side? It's, or... I, are you taking into account Kurt's Christmases? I will admit that 80% is my side and maybe 20% is Kurt's so side. So one visit is Kurt's <laughs> and four of them are your family? Because yeah. you said five. So I that know. Would, okay, when nah. I say it out loud, it sounds really intimidating and it sounds a lot. And, <laughs> okay, you make it sound like I'm an asshole. No, but I'm not. I wasn't. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying. In my head, I'm like, okay, okay, let's back Math. Up. I was figuring out math. And, and I was shocked that actually my percentages were actually 100% correct. So, yay me, math. Oh, I'm a mathematician. And uh, a social worker. <laughs> so, yeah, we do, we do a big get-together with my mom's entire side of the family. So, like, my grandma, her three daughters, and then all of the grandchildren and all of the great-grandchildren. So, that's, like, over 30 of us, Okay. Mm. So that's first Christmas. Second Christmas <laughs> is... With, it's like lunches and breakfast. I know. I know. That's why I like multiples <laughs> of things. I can't have just one. I don't do just one lunch. There's I need first lunch and second lunch. First okay? Christmas, second Christmas. Yeah. So then second Christmas this year, in order that we're going in, will be my husband's immediate family. And so we'll get together. And it is legit the best food, it's nonstop, like it's 17 meals. His mom every year is always like, we're going to do just nothing but snacks. I don't feel like cooking. So all we're going to have this year is prime rib, crab legs, <laughs> chili, Those are chicken snacks? noodle soup. If everybody could bring an appetizer, you know, <laughs> um, these, <laughs> like a group of people always literally home make uh, an entire counter's worth of desserts. And is then, there fudge? Is and then there's typically there wings. Fudge? Always fudge. God, I love fudge. There's, uh, like, it's, it's, in, like, it's hilarious the amount of food for the number, like, there's a large number of us, but it's, Not a, enough. it's a ridiculous amount of food. And it's delightful because his mother's the best cook. So, that second Christmas where we're, it's nothing but gluttony and you kind of want to die, but it's also all day long, so you hurt all day long. So, you know, it's fine. You just do it for Christmas. You also, you can do it slow in an increment, so the pain doesn't have to feel like an I know, explosion. But what's hard is you go hard on, like, the appetizers, mm. and then you don't want to, like, shy away from the prime rib or the crab legs What if you or the soup? a to-go container? You know, that would be smart, but again, the gluttony in me is just like, I want all of this food inside of me well, right now. Well, what if now. you glutton and then to go? I mean, I think we could do that. Just saying. Yeah. It's an option. I mean, we joke about how swollen we truly are the next day because of the amount of salt intake. I mean, but it's fine. It's worth See, it. You know we what have that, good family members. Okay, so that reminds me of, there were a lot of Christmases where I, my the family that I lived with, um, had moved to Kansas City, and my grandma lived out of town. My mom lived out of town. I had no family here. And that was one of the things that was the saddest thing for me. I mean, obviously, I was alone on Christmas unless I went somewhere. Um, but I was sad because I just wanted good food. I wasn't going to make all that food right. myself. And so I would just kind of beg my friends, like, 
Hey, do you guys happen to have any leftover? Any extra tater? Like, I could really use some yummy Christmas food or Thanksgiving food or whatever. And I think oh, yeah, that's, that's something that, especially for our our individuals who are away at college or don't have a lot of family or mm -hmm. are were previous foster parent or foster kids and don't have anywhere really to go or whatever it looks like, it, it can be kind of a lonely time. Yeah. Right? Oh, I bet. Check on your friends. <laughs> go <laughs> check, saying go is check on your lonely food. friends. Give them food. Because honestly, yeah. like when, when my friend brought me food, mm -hmm. I know it seems like such a minor thing. And, and I asked oh, no. for it. Yeah. But that is very it's in line so with major. my personality. But, it's, but if I didn't, yeah. if she had just brought it, I would have been like, oh my God, you were thinking of me. Yeah. Or even, I always kind of joked, like, whenever we had a friend who was here who didn't have anywhere to go, mm -hmm. I would bring them to my husband and I's Christmas and they'd be like, I'm not coming to your family Christmas. I'm like, why not? Like, I, I'm kind of the one that brings in the strays, I right. guess. Because I'm like, well. Because you remember that. Why, why wouldn't I? Like, right. I don't. Well, and that's the purpose, too, is just. Well, why would anybody have our, an issue? I think all of our holidays, too, were like, if you don't have anywhere to go, you're more than invited. Like, way I grew up, and even to this day, my mom will be like, I'm just letting you know you're invited. But if you don't want to come, you don't have to. Just, just so you know. And, like, she already yeah. gives them an out. She already gives them an invite. But she just wants it the door to be open. Because a lot of people, people don't, don't realize know. that it is. Yeah. And and sometimes I think people think, oh, you're just inviting me to be nice. And so that's why I think she adds the disclaimer. You don't have to. But just come over if you want. We'll, we'll always have extra. But I know. I remember when I was in graduate school, I wasn't home for oh, yeah. half of the holidays. And I remember I would call home and I would just ball. And then I would be not at home and I would be so upset because I'm like the potatoes weren't the same <laughs> and like or like this tradition wasn't there you know and it's not like it's not like I didn't enjoy it but it's not the same and it just it's sad it can be sad yeah it can be lonely even when I was at someone's house for Thanksgiving and I still was just like it's just, Ugh. I still feel left out like Joel makes the best green bean casserole I just learned he adds what well, I always I love how much mm -hmm. love he adds a lot of love um no i always thought he added extra of those little fried onions because i love fried onions but no he adds a little bit of soy sauce and i think that's how i make it you add the soy sauce yeah <gasps> mouth watering yes that should be the only way anybody makes it that is delicious okay. but a lot of people don't they just do the soup yeah the cans the green beans and the fried in, come on, love put a little love. Little bit of love. Put a little love in there. Put a little love. Put a little love in your heart. Anyway, so second Christmas. What about third Christmas? Okay, so third Christmas is Christmas Eve. This year is the first year we're changing it in, and if this dates back to before I even existed, this tradition is changing. But my fam, my just immediate family, minus one of my siblings and their family, we're all going to get together. And the theme is charcuterie. So everybody is to bring a charcuterie board of some sort. I love it. So I'm bringing um, a dessert charcuterie and a hot chocolate. Like I'm bringing a crock pot of hot chocolate and like char hot chocolate dippings and shit. Nice. Yeah. So that'll be fun. We just are getting together for food because we don't know what to do because we've always had um, – a Christmas Eve and it's going to be a little different, which is fine because that's why we have six Christmas. So anyways, going on to the next Christmas, we have Christmas morning with just my family. Wait, you have six? Right. because we're it was five. No, we're getting on, that was a third, so now we're going on the fourth. Fourth Christmas is just... Well, then your math was wrong. Okay, well, science is hard, okay? <laughs> so fifth Christmas is just my immediate family, like my children. Santa comes, of course. And the reason why... Does Santa come on Christmas? Yes. In my family, Santa comes on Christmas. And it, I think what makes it a little... The reason why it could be more Christmases and I could be more inclusive of my husband's family, the, the pickup and drop-off for my stepson is noon on Christmas Day. So that kind of disrupts Christmas Day. Um, and my husband's family always does something around then in Stanton... So we, rather than driving, we just always stay in Omaha. Mm -hmm. So, like, 
I, if that cutoff wasn't noon on Christmas Day, which I think was done for reasons, we never make Stanton for his extended family. So because of that, we do our immediate family. Santa comes in the morning. If we pick so up, is he with you? No. So this year we pick him up at noon. So Santa will come for my two littles. He will arrive and then at noon, my stepson, and then the five of us will open gifts once he gets there. So, so we wait to open gifts until he gets there as a family. Oh my god. Yeah. So the little ones have to wait until noon. Yeah, but luckily, I mean, they have to wait. They have to stare. At the present. At the presents until noon. Yeah. But see, I think what makes it easy is, again, we have so many Christmases. In general, I don't buy a lot of Christmas presents. I have a list, of course, <laughs> and a budget, of course. So I typically don't buy many gifts quantity-wise for the children because we have so many fucking Christmases. Like, I, where would I put it? Mm -hmm. Um, and again, I, I'm, I make sure we also get rid of everything before Christmas. So we have room to put the new toys. That's also a Christmas tradition that I've done. Anywho, we'll get to that. But so the next Christmas this year we are hosting. So it will be my entire family plus my grandma will come over because the joke is my grandma will give all of us money and then we wrap it and we open it in front of her. And, and she always is like, wow, grandma, you always do the best buying us presents. And then it's been that way since I was a child. She's always done it that way, which I think is brilliant. So, you so she, so we open her presents from my grandma, so from my kid's great grandma, and then we exchange gifts. So me and my siblings exchange gifts. We give my parents gifts. So all of that is hosted at my house. Right. But we also cook a big dinner, and so so that that again is my immediate family. Mm -hmm. um, but with the sibling that was missing on Christmas Eve because they are with his wife's family on Christmas Eve. So that's me and my family getting together. That's our tradition. And then at, on the 30th, we're going to get together with my dad's side of the family and do another bit together with like cousins and aunt and uncle, grandma so, again. So then that that's more just a meal. And the tradition for that, um, also is something that is just my family. Our tradition is she orders Valentinos and cooks shrimp. So we have shrimp and Valentinos. And it we've, is a bizarre tradition. Yeah. We've been, that was normally our Christmas Eve tradition. It's been moved to the week after, which is fine. We just wanted the meal. And truth be told, I am not a normal fan of Valentinos, but on Christmas Eve, I like Valentinos. It's just what, you know, I don't like shrimp. I wouldn't eat shrimp ever, but. It's trash but my family loves it <clears throat> so, so then good for them even just thinking about like that christmas that's my itinerary yeah your itinerary for christmas and then all the gifts i have to bring and get and the scheduling of right. like making sure the gifts are in time for the my, week before christmas my head i'm, I'm and, planning presents and we plan we're doing like the saran wrap ball game yeah. right so i'm currently all hyperventilating and my head is exploding yeah so I think but that, I'm like running off of adrenaline and gin right now. So right. like it's fine. I'm but fine. I, I'm fine. But I'm fine. But I do think that that brings up a, a really good thing about how Christmas it can be this exhausting time of year. Which how is it for you? So that was my itinerary. What's your itinerary? Well, but I, I well I'll get there. But I I want to talk more about like. That exhaustion, like I just feel like there are some people who are expected to do that level of itinerary mm -hmm. and that's not the way that their brain works. And so they have a choice. They're either met with living up to that level of itinerary or failing and being met with criticisms by parents or siblings or the, why are you here? We'd love to have you here. And then they oh, feel yeah. bad. The guilt trip. Yeah. Right. And it's not even always an intended guilt trip. Right. But still, it's like the, we miss you. Mm -hmm. Where are you? What's going on? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Right. And so then it's like, oh my God, I'm just not. Or like someone gets you a present and you didn't get them one. And then you're like, oh God. And that is one of those stressors too of 
I'm a gift giver. I have inherited. Yes, you are. I am. And I have inherited that from my mother. <laughs> if anybody knows my mother, these were gifts from my mother. They were good gifts. I know. Fucking A. Giant. Good job. Giant gin mugs. Thank you, Renee. Um, but as a gift giver, I like to give gifts. I don't expect them in return. But if I buy a gift for a friend who has one child and I have four they feel obligated to try to buy four gifts. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody who is a colleague buys me a gift and I'm like, I didn't even think about buying you one because I have so many fucking people to buy a gift for. Then I'm like, I'm an asshole. Oh my gosh. I actually had a colleague the other day say, and I fucking loved it. She's, she's so raw and I love it so much. She's like... <laughs> Are you getting, are we, you getting, are we gift giving this year? Cause I haven't gotten you anything. And I said, I haven't gotten you anything. She goes, cool. We're not gift giving. Are we gift giving this year? <laughs> and she just goes that And way. my other colleague's like, yeah, I already got you some. She's like, okay, now I know where we're at. Yeah. Because I'm like. That's so funny. You I You know what that makes that. me think of? So for the longest time when like my brother has three kids and my sister has one for a while, it was just us and our, my stepson. So just one, right? And every, like, birthday, Christmas, he always would gift my niece and my stepson, like, from, he'd get a gift from each of his kids. So he would get them three gifts. Dear God. And then we would just give one gift per kid. And after a while, I think at one time I said, why do you keep doing that? Like, because I was feeling stressed out, like, w will you give me, give my stepson three gifts and I give your kid a gift? And he finally goes, he goes, no, I... I give you three because you and, and Lisa have to get my kids three gifts. You you have one oh. kid. He goes, it's fair. Oh, and so it was. That it makes was, sense. It was just a moment where it was interesting for me to have that moment of here. I am thinking, oh my gosh, like he is winning, and but all not the, really. But all the while, it was never a competition. It was only in my head, and it was the same number, and it was fair, but it. You know, again, it was that perception of like, I'm not doing good enough. And isn't that so funny how I think we just, we could take it one way, but here I, I finally just said something and we have a dialogue and realize we're actually on the same page. And no, and he's like, and he even said, I never meant for you to feel bad. He's like, I can stop. I, I just thought it wasn't fair. So I, I, he was trying to quietly God, make that it is fair. so funny how we but isn't that funny how things. yeah i just took it into a weird place and honestly the blessing of that is that you said something that created a dialogue because how often do we not have those conversations and then nothing gets worked out and then it becomes this like place old, of resentment or like insecurity right or even fear. tradition i was just talking to beckett about how oddly traditions form there was there's this story of this little girl watching her mom cook ham for christmas have you heard this story mm -hmm. and she's like mom why do you cut off the ends of the ham and the mom said well i don't know that's what grandma always did so that's what i do and so she went and asked her mom and said mom why why do you cut off the ends of the ham and she says well, I don't know. That's what great grandma used to do. So, well, let, let's go ask her. Mm -hmm. So they went and asked her. They asked their great grandma, like, why do you cut off the ends of the ham? And she says, because I didn't have a pan big enough to hold the ham. So I had to cut off the ends <laughs> to cook the ham. Yeah. And it becomes the tradition. Right. Even though it's unnecessary now. Right. Just unnecessary. Because we don't always ask yeah. the wise. Yeah. Anyway, my childhood, um, I was an only child raised by my grandparents. So you can imagine how wild and crazy that Christmas was in Arizona at my great grandmother's house. Ooh. Uh huh. At the trailer court community of retirees. Ooh. Yeah, it was lit. So, actually, it was pretty fun. 
I was very much an old soul. I loved being around old, older people. I loved having grown up conversations. So we would sit around and play cards. It was my jam. Mm-hmm. There was this one game. Oh my God, I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden on the name. I can't remember the name, but you had to, um, I don't know, you had to be able to take all of your cards and be able to go down once with sets and runs. Oh, but like rummy? Kind of. Generally? But you had you had a jar of pennies. And so if there was a card that came up that you really wanted, if the person, if the next person didn't want it, you could buy it for a penny, but you would have to take an extra card that you didn't know. But if somebody ahead of you wanted it, you wouldn't get that card. And so you're like, motherfucker. Because it would cause you to have to change your whole strategy. And your, it was a really fun game. Mm-hmm. And then we had these lumineers that we would light. It was really fun. Apparently, my grandma told me the story of there were there's these older folks that would, well, I guess it was a trailer community. They were all old folks. But they would leave candy on the porches. And my grandma said, I was like five years old. And I said, Grandma, (laughs) what if we just sneak up and grab the candy off those other porches before they see? And she's like, no. (laughs) (laughs) That wasn't a tradition? That's stealing. (laughs) And I'm like, ugh, but it's delicious and they wouldn't know. I don't understand. I'm not hurting anybody. It's a victimless crime. (laughs) Borrowing it. Uh, so, needless to say, now, um, my very first Christmas with Joel's family. Mm-hmm. How was that? Was it the opposite of card games in a retire trailer park? Oh, my home? God. I don't. They don't play games. They, Did you cry? It's all. I could have. It, it's all chaos. I sat on the edge of a couch and I just like at the farthest end of the room. I really did. Almost as though I was watching a movie. I think because I had to take it all in. Because for folks who may not have heard, my husband has nine siblings and they all have children and their children have children and sometimes their children's children have children. So for... You have a town. A town is It's a motherfucking town. Yeah, I got it. And... The Christmas gifts for the kids, like you, the nice thing about that is you would just draw a name. Yeah. So each of my kids bought one gift for someone else and somebody bought a gift for them. That was easy. But it was overwhelming. Yeah. I was very overwhelmed with all of the things we had to do. It was like, it was too much because I was used to very small quaint. Yeah. Well, and like, yeah, we don't buy a lot of gifts either. We only buy gifts for just my immediate nieces and nephews. Otherwise, we just do a white elephant for all the rest of the things. Yeah, we do so two it's white not, elephants. We do two white elephants, but it's not like, it's it's not as expensive as what it sounds like when I list it off the ridiculous right. amount of people. Right. I that, do like yeah. white elephant gifts though. I, I think those are hilarious. Yeah, we've been doing that since I was a child. Each year we have so a really... Fun really fun time trying to figure out what we're going to do this yeah. year. It, it's like an advent, um, liquor calendar. Oh yeah. It was like 10 bucks. So then we're going to buy like a $15 gift card to put with it. I'm like, man, I would fucking, I'll pick my own. I've done that. I remember when I was little, I used to do that. I used to <laughs> buy stuff that, so with the intention of stealing it to take it home. Oh, I mean, then you potentially go home with something you like. Yeah. One year, oh my gosh, so one year, my sister-in-law, I don't know, she's not a part of the family anymore because of marriage, right, divorce, but I don't know if she misunderstood the idea of White Elephant. She owns a, she's part owner of a local Chinese restaurant, and one of the white elephant things was it was a like a piggy bank, like the kind that counts your money. Mm-hmm. And I was like first to go, and I was like, "This is fucking stupid." <laughs> I was pissed. Like, I kept trying to get people to steal it, right? Oh yeah, you try to sell it. And then I looked in there, and I was like, "Shut the fuck up, Joel." I think, I think there are Chinese gift cards in there. Chinese gift cards. What the fuck? 
And so I'm like, I'm not going to say anything anymore. So I didn't. And I'm like, there's at least two in there. And they were $20 each. So I'm like, well, this is worth at least 40 fucking dollars. I'm not saying shit. <laughs> I know. And everyone likes a good egg roll. No fucking shit. And yeah. it was a buffet Chinese restaurant. Oh, God. Even I... better. With a hoo type grill. Oh, God. And so I'm like. Yes. And, and Joel, like, had, at one point, had start, he continued to. And I was like, shut the fuck up. Like, no. So it continued, and people would joke about it, like, <laughs> but I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> and then no one took it. There was $100 worth Shut up. of gift certificates yeah. in this motherfucking piggy bank. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, that is hilarious. Thank you, Peggy. We do things like that. Every year, my cousin always gives away, like, something, like a roll of toilet paper, but with cash inside of it. But it's funny because the year of 2020, we were all like, oh, everyone better sleep. You know, it was, it was toilet paper jokes. But mental health. <laughs> <laughs> COVID. And we're therapists. <laughs> why, are you, why are we here? Why are we here? Oh, yeah. We have listeners. Sorry, guys. It wasn't uh, just me and Angie swapping our itineraries for the rest of apparently. December. No, but Christmas can really invoke... So many things. I mean, even financial stress. You know, so like, what do you, what do you do? You had mentioned, um, what do you do? You save twenty dollars a <laughs> yeah, week. I guess. How are you so fucking disciplined? Because, How are you, my friend? First of all, like, because, what because is it, happening? I don't how, have discipline, Angie, friend. How long have you been a mother? And how long have you been doing like Christmas of explosion every year? You know, I I've just learned how to play the game. I, again. I've learned how to play play the game. I play it in different ways. My mom <laughs> gifts me money. <laughs> That's done me well. That's well, how I don't I have play that. My mom doesn't gift me money for Christmas. Um, no, I think I think half of it is I, like like I said, growing up, minus my husband's Christmases. Growing up, we always had at least three Christmases minimum. Meaning, we would have a Christmas Eve. We would do a Christmas morning with my immediate family, Christmas afternoon and evening with another extended family. So we would always have like event, pause, event, pause, event, and that would be Christmas. Now it was, oops, sorry, listener, just jacking my mic, which is the gin inside of me. Push it, your hands. You want to talk with your hands. I'm talking with my hands. I'm sorry, listeners. Sorry. Okay. So I was used to like the busy Christmas Eve, Christmas Day events. Now, fast forward to joining my family with my husbands and... Your husbands? The, yeah, plural. No, 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 but with... She's just, got two folks. You know, sorry, Kurt. This is awkward. <laughs> um, but with the combination of my husband has a big family and my family has... We've all gotten exploded. married and bred. So there's a lot of us. And so we've exploded into multiple Christmases plus the traditions that we want to continue with my immediate family you know, with my kids, grandparents, etc. So that's why, luckily, I married somebody who loves holidays and events and parties as much as I do. Because all, but the difference is, is all I have to do, and you heard me on the phone before we started filming, I go, okay, Kurt, so here's the itinerary for the rest of this week. So we have this on this day. We need to tell this person to come over on this day so we can get ready for this party on this day. That is this week. I will let you know what next week is. Because my job is to just let him know when to be ready. And, I mean, he doesn't buy the gifts. Like, even when we exchange names with my siblings, we have we do an exchange. And I even text my sister-in-law and I go, hey, what do you want Kurt to get you? Like, you know it's me getting you the gift, right? Wink, wink. And so it's just kind of what we do. But I also loved gift giving only during the holidays. I'm not a gift mm. giver. I hate spending money. Mm-hmm. I have a budget. I stick to my budget, but when it's Christmas time, and and I I think I've heard feedback that I I give good gifts when I give gifts because I oh, when's the when's the last gift I've gotten from you? Uh, never. Saying. I don't know. When have I given you a gift? I think I got you elderberry syrup and like a packet, and I made you a whole bunch of food when your family was sick a couple years ago. I think it was before like Iris was even born. That's true. Because you were sick and you were trying to go natural. So I got, oh, I made you those essential oils and I got you elderberry syrup. 
I love that you because you this. wanted it to be natural because you were, you know, chemicals, things like that. But I remember it was before Iris was born, so it was a little bit ago. And I dropped off homemade food and soup for your family and yeah. go-gurts. Yeah. You have for been the so probiotics. Great. I was just giving you shit. No, I know. But I don't give you gifts often because I think you're doing fine. It's fine. I just, I know when I'm going to give you gifts. You show me love in many other ways. <laughs> I interpret your dreams. Sexual favors. I give you free therapy all the kidding. time. <laughs> every time we record. That's right. And sexual favors. And sexual favors. So that's why we said husbands plural. Anyway, <laughs> you're my husband. <laughs> it's right. Well, it, it feels <laughs> if right. If you didn't understand. It, it feels pronouns. right. And no traditions are so funny though. But okay. I no, I love the chaos. I think yeah. I I it doesn't stress me out having a lot of plans. I understand and empathize that people don't like my Christmases and mm-hmm. they wouldn't like the number of people or Christmases. But I have decided this is my experience and I'm just I want to enjoy this time of the year, so I'm going to make it so I enjoy it. So mm-hmm. that's why I change the game and make it so I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You know, I make sure we plan certain games that I will have fun doing so I do it. So I plan the games. Or I host it so I know and can control like that. Now, if people didn't like hosting, then no fucking host. So this year... That's what I do, personally. This year is interesting. Joel's dad died September of last year. So every Thanksgiving and Christmas was at Tom's house. Joel and I would go and set up the Christmas tree, all the Christmas decorations at Tom's house, and the whole family would go over there for Christmas. So Thanksgiving this year, well, Thanksgiving, Christmas last year, we still had the house, so it was still there. Thanksgiving this year, Joel and I hosted. Christmas this year was a debate around Thanksgiving because we weren't sure what was going to happen. And I I had made the statement, and as hard as this is, Tom was one of five siblings. Five. Right, one, two, six. He was one of six. One had died younger. I don't know at what age they all stopped meeting together, but I do know that my husband was younger when Tom stopped meeting with his siblings and his Christmas became his mm-hmm. intimate family. Mm-hmm. And so... The, the size of our family all together is honestly reaching that point of maybe that is where we have to start branching off. Mm. Even though my husband being number nine, he's one of the younger ones. So his kids are younger than the older brothers. The older brothers have grandkids now and they all have in-laws Oh, yeah. And it doesn't look like it did. And so I had made that statement of maybe, maybe that's what we need to do. Right. And I feel like the asshole, right? Because nobody really wants that. And I'm not saying that and we have to. And it's hard when the traditions change. It yeah. is. That's so hard because yeah. it's, but even though Joel's, one of Joel's brothers bought Tom's house. It, my niece had said, I want to go to grandpa's for Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I said, but it's not grandpa's anymore. It's a house. It won't feel the same. Right. Even if we set it up exactly similarly, the same. It's not the same. it won't. And we will only be let down trying to recreate what once was. Mm-hmm. If we because recreate, what you're trying to recreate isn't here anymore. It can't exist yeah, anymore. It's not here. So if we recreate something new, and the blessing that we got was Tom died in September. Mm -hmm. So we got Thanksgiving and Christmas, which aside from Tom not being there, felt the same. And it really was almost like this extended eulogy Mm -hmm. of his legacy. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And it was was beautiful. I mean, we even put his picture in his chair. No one sat in his chair. Like it was... 
It was emotional. It was beautiful. It it was healing. And so they, I think they decided on having Christmas a s- similar time, or no, evening time at one of the other brothers' homes. So it's still slightly different. Um, I think it, I think they said evening. I'm not even sure. It doesn't matter. But it, I think when there's that loss, when there's that patriarch or matriarch, like mm-hmm. that makes the holiday so, so emotional. It's like you want, like for you, with your traditions and everything that you have, mm-hmm. if you lose the staple, yeah, it makes it so much more difficult. Like you're walking through quick quicksand, I guess. Yeah. Well, and I think that's why this year we awkwardly made our Christmas Eve. I I don't think that's going to be our normal tradition. It's only because this is the first year our Christmas Eve is different. Like the, our, we have never done Christmas Eve this way, and I think just my siblings and I were like, well, "What do we What do we do?" And and it's only the three of the four of us too, because the fourth one always does Christmas Eve with his in laws. Mm. So it's not even like it's really that big of a deal. And truth be told, we could all just stay at home. Like we don't need to. I think we just were like, we need to do something because it's a filler year. Like it's like a gap year. We don't know what to do. Also, why not? And so we just thought. If we could do something easy and it's just some, it's simple food. It's not like a meal. We're not really, it's more just an excuse to get together. And, you know, we know it's short. And you have the next day off. Yeah. And (laughs) so I think we just, I mean, I'm sure it'll, that is a transitioning holiday. Like it's a changing holiday as we speak. We're in the middle of it. And I'm sure even the one with my extended family is also going to be changing at some point because everyone is getting bigger. Like the Mm -hmm. games are changing this year. My, well, this will air afterwards, luckily, because my extended family doesn't know. We're switching things up a little bit. But we have been the past few years because the kids are getting bigger. So it's harder. You know, the kids are teenagers now. They want to play the games that we play because they're at the age that we started these games. So now we're like, oh, we we exchange booze a lot. Like, maybe we should change this. <laughs> and so, well, you have to make or it. include them, you mm-hmm. know. And so we're just, we're kind of changing some of the transitions of, the old traditions and I'm Mm -hmm. sure it will always stay that way like the the staple of getting together is is still there but it I think it's always evolving Mm -hmm. um but for us and my family in particular not everybody's but my family is we're lucky that we all get along Mm -hmm. for the number of the sheer number of people we have because we can get together with our family of 40 or like our family of like 15 and spend the whole day together and we're fine. So I think that's also why we don't mind and we welcome the frequent get togethers. Yeah. Because it's because we're just like, oh, but we always have this one food and oh it's so good. Or, you know, my mother in law's prime rib. Like we always joke about how she wants a sit like not a sit down meal and she only wants snacks, but we're eating prime rib and crab legs, you know, it's just, maybe those are snacks to her, Jamie, back the fuck off, maybe they are, maybe in Stanton, that's how they do things, I mean, I would love to see what a sit-down meal looks like, but I would like you to know that that prime rib, I shit you not, it's bigger than this goddamn mug, like, it is legit, as big as your fucking plate, you have to, it's a snack size, (laughs) it's a snack, prime rib, Fucking snack size. In order to make some room for your from your apps, but I mean, but that's the tradition is we just joke about it, and it's you know what though, if you come from a large family, that, or yeah, we have two big families that like each other that merged around a lot of people. Yeah, you kind of figure that out. I just heard a story recently of what was it like. 13 strangers fucking road tripped from Florida. Um, like went through Tallahassee, like they, they, flights or shit was canceled. And so they all just just threw themselves Mm -hmm. in a car and none of them knew one another. And they're like, well, we all distinctively were our own and we just got along. And I kind of, I kind of, I kind of love that because I do feel like if you are one gift that I've gotten from my husband's family is 
being around so many different personalities in such a large group, you just kind of figure out where to go. Yeah. Oh, I definitely think there are cliques within the cliques and you just, uh-huh. yeah. You just figure it out. I mean, you're polite, but yeah, you just. Should we read our mugs? Yes. Um, I'll start. <laughs> Dear Santa, let me explain. I feel like that lines up in my personality. Um, Also, I would like to say that these mugs, I know I said it before, but I want to say it again, were gifted from my mother, the gift giver of all gift gift giver givers. And they're giant. They're as big as it's. This is like a double. Like I still have half a drink left and I feel so drunk. I don't even know. And mine says, bah humbug. Nope. Read it again. Baham mug. Uh, <laughs> got me. <laughs> uh, I was like, is it different on the back? Did you see me? Huh. Uh, I'll take to that. Yay. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. And honestly, happy holidays. Just. Be you, celebrate you, don't be afraid to take a break if you need it, don't be afraid to take space if you need it, don't be afraid to go hide in the bathroom if you are forced to go to a big family gallery. If you don't want six Christmases, go to the ones that you want to. Right. And it's okay to also, if you are by yourself, it's okay to work on Christmas. I used to do that. Um, If you want food, ask I guarantee you people will give it. I mean, honestly, like if, if somebody, seriously, I ask, I try to ask whomever I can if they want meals, but we always have so much leftovers because my husband yeah, loves to prepare food. It. Yeah. If somebody was like, Hey, I don't get Thanksgiving, Christmas, Thanksgiving or Christmas this year. Like if you have leftovers, I'd be like, fuck yes. Take them all. There's so much. There's so much. Um, and that being said, if anybody has leftover fudge, there is no fudge maker in the Stevens household. Really? I, I don't know any, no one, there's Come never. On, Joseph, get I, with I, it. I know. There's no fudge in my immediate household. There's no fudge at Why? the giant. I don't even like fudge, but I expect it to be there. Fucking Stevens home. I, I don't know if none of them marry bakers. I'll steal bakers. some for you. And like, I love it. a See, that'll really... See, be, that'll be my next gift to you. I'm yes. going to steal it because I don't eat it, and I'll give it to you. All you need to do is just take a couple slices like you're eating it, stash it in a container, not in your pocket. It I will melt. shove it in my pocket. Shove it in your mouth. Spit it out in into a pocket. container. No, but that really, like, thick... Uh, Gross. God, yeah. I love fudge. I may or may not have found fudge, side note, in the refrigerator, but it was at work. I'm sorry. This is at work. I need to clarify. This was at my job. This was yesterday and today. Okay. Oh, this is recent. Um, <laughs> this is live. Live. On a Christmas plate, but the foil was pushed back. So I took that as, this is free for all. Oh, God. What the <laughs> fuck did you do? I ate it all. What? <laughs> I ate. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> oh my god, you took it to a crazy place. I. Yep. Yeah, this is this is why I am ten pounds heavier than I normally am right now, <laughs> and forty pounds heavier than I should be. But you know Who's what? Counting. I'll drink drink to that. Fudge is delicious. (laughs) All right, folks. We love you so much. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy holidays. Bye. Bye. If you think we're cool, or even if you don't, please like or subscribe so you'll stay up to date on all things The Shrink Show. Feel free to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at The Shrink Show. You can also visit our website at theshrinkshowpodcast.com to check out some of our merch, submit your episode topic requests, tell us a funny story, or even donate money or gin to the cause. 
Thank you for choosing to spend a portion of your life with us. And remember, don't take yourself too seriously. Life is all a giant shrink show. A Huda Media Production. Side effects of listening to this podcast may include side aches or snorting from laughter, impromptu jazz hands, nodding in agreement even though you might be listening alone, an occasional, you said it girl, and mild cases of existential dread. This podcast is strictly for entertainment and informative purposes only and is not intended or implied to diagnose, treat, or otherwise substitute for professional mental health, medical, legal, or other advice. Thank you.